Hello everyone, I am Dee Dee Dweller and we are back with more Stranded Alien Dawn, this time trying out the brand new Team and Train update which was just released by the Stranded Alien Dawn development team. So we're going to go ahead and start a brand new playthrough and if you're following my other one, don't worry, it's coming back, but we're going to start a Desertum region playthrough which is something I've been wanting to try but waited until we had this new release because I saw it was coming on the horizon. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Game difficulty, let's try something harder this time. What, what's the difference? So hard, we get 40 scrap metal, 40 emergency, one laser pistol and 10 first aid. Or we could go very hard, which gives us no weapons, only 20 emergency rations and five first aid kits. For the sake of the drama, let's play on very hard. And we're gonna go with a seed called Otter Cat. And the reason being, I saw this on another YouTuber's channel and I absolutely fell in love with the seed. I will, of course, give credit and link that down in the description if you were interested in checking it out. I really wanna see who this new character is. So let's scroll down until we find somebody that looks unfamiliar to us. Hugo. Hugo's our new guy. So he is a zoo planet defender. That's really exciting. Age 40, underpaid zookeeper at the biggest tourist destination in the known solar system, Galactic Zoo. A renowned veteran, he now travels through the stars on his journey to learn about all the species the Cosmo has to offer. And now he's crash landed with us. So we are of course going to add this new character to our team, but we still only get four survivors for our crash landing pod. So it looks like he is proficient in farming and cooking, which normally I would have Emmeline, Rita, or Vivian for. I've had a lot of people recommend Lara in the past. Haven't tried her yet. I hope too soon, but for this playthrough, since we have Hugo, we're gonna let him handle that. I still think it's really important that we do have a crafter slash tailor on our team. So I am inclined to still use Vivian. I, I can't let her go. <laughs> I have to have her. Hugo does have a little bit of combat history, which I think is important here. He has an interest in combat, so he's going to level up that skill faster. So I do feel like kind of safe on the combat side, but we do really need somebody who can do research. If Hugo's going to both be our animal tamer and our combat, Vivian can be our cook and our crafter. And I almost want to do Edmund or Daniel. Daniel has a five in intellect. He is combat incapable though, so we won't be able to rely on him for that at all. Edmund is a four in intellect, but he gets hungry 25% quicker and we're gonna have a lot less food, especially at the very beginning. Krista, of course, is our go-to girl for intellect, but I also want to try something different on this playthrough. I do want to experiment with different characters, so I don't want to just run the same strategy as we had in the other playthrough. I want these two playthroughs, especially if they're running side by side, to have different characters. Oh, and I hadn't even considered we still need a healer and Vivian will not heal at all. Katina cannot fail a healing save, and she is a three in intellect. I wonder if we could use her for our healer, and when she's not healing, for our research bench. Which leaves the issue of who will be our construction guy. I usually do want Ken. He's so important when it comes to the scavenging. And he's great at combat, but then we're left with the issue of who's going to do construction. So previously for construction, we had Chad on our team on the other playthrough, the Sabrius region. So I think for the sake of variety in our deserted region, we're going to use Ken for this one. So this is our party. Hopefully I haven't just sealed our fate. So I'm sure you guys can guess why I chose this seed in particular. And that is because we crash land right next to a large body of water, which to me is just amazing. I love being able to build my settlements or my bases next to water. It's also really nice to have your back to the water because one side is now defended by just nature. The fact that we don't have 
So far, any kind of aquatic enemies that come crawling out of these lakes, it makes for a nice barrier. Okay, resource wise, we have 20 emergency rations and five first aid kits and literally no weapons. So we're definitely gonna wanna start crafting immediately in this playthrough. We need shelter, beds, and a fire and a place to build them and we'll manage our activities really quickly. So Quinn is obviously our construction guy. I believe I wanted Vivian cooking and Katina we want doing research, but mostly want, I think we want Hugo doing most of the planting. Katina is our research person and our, um, our healer. I'm gonna leave the ranching, the new interest, on um, Katina and Vivian as well as Hugo because I don't know who is gonna be available at the moment of need when ranching comes up, so I'm just gonna leave that on. Okay, I think that's good for right now. So let's go ahead and get our folks started. He's going to cut those. Hugo, my friend, I'm gonna ask you to cut the trees. Vivian blade grass and when Katina is done crying we can ask her to do the research. So some things that we should probably look for are our resources. And what is close by? We have uh, looks like plenty of mining, plenty of scavenging, the sweet syrups those are always super valuable, um, and some cotton blossom right here. And I think because this is such a great resource for making sure they don't starve, we'll research that pretty immediately as well. And we might have enough resources to start constructing our camp. So let's, let's see. Probably want to build or farm right up here in this wetter area. So for the sake of our temporary camp, I kind of want to put that here where I have all of this to kind of excavate before we can use the space. So I don't feel bad about building here because this is all going to be in the way of building anything pretty. So this is a good spot for our temporary shelter. We need some sleeping cots for our folks here and we need some storage. Okay. And we'll also do some stockpiles and a couple more stockpiles. Mm, maybe over here. That ought to do us. And I'm sure Quinn will get started, yep, constructing that right away. I believe, yes, oh, fabulous, fabulous. We have grain cob. That is absolutely perfect. Speaking of research, I should probably think about putting up a research desk. Oh, and a fire, I guess, so. Let's spin this around and we will come in here to science, grab this, think about building ourselves a nice little research desk and a campfire, which I can't do yet. I'm gonna have Quinn construct our stockpile first just so that everybody else can start transporting things. Vivian is heading over here to eat and now I'm going to ask her to haul this stuff. But we still don't have a shelf to haul any of this to. And Katina discovered the Heptagonia, which is great. It produces a sweet syrup, which can be harvested and used for cooking. And to wouldn't say no to drinking it raw either. It seems to be safe. All of that said, let's go in here to our raw foods category and take meat off the menu. And I take it that means we do have shelves now, which is terrific. That's kind of something we needed. <laughs> And camping, we are now able to construct our campfire. So we're going to do that as well. Tina has hypothermia, not great. It is 18 degrees outside, which is really, really cold. <laughs> and it looks like we have a low food supply already. We are looking at two days. So we're gonna have to start bringing in some alternative food other than emergency rations very, very quickly. Looks like everybody's close to camp now and we'll be able to start setting up in earnest. I did not even spot this before. We have a new icon in our menu up here. Katina is still feeling way too cold. Maybe we could help her by constructing this campfire and warming things up a bit. And let's also set a research for our research queue. I think 
constructing weapons is gonna be really, really high up there on our list. Let's do that first. We have some scavenging to do and Quinn's gonna do it. Great. Cause for celebration. We did it, guys! Yay! First camp. Oh, what about defenses? Do you have the means to build ourselves a little defense? And then we need ourselves a gate, of course. Let's put one here and here. And we'll do this as well. Oh, we don't have scrap metal for traps, though. So I guess uh, we'll get there when we get there. Oh, 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 we definitely want to research these. If you watched my previous playthrough, you know how much I love the shroom torches. And I think that these are amazing workarounds for expending electricity on lighting. Plus it gives you the decor buff. There's so many good things that come out of this. You can also uh, cook them and eat them. I wouldn't eat them raw because apparently there's like a 20% chance or something of food poisoning, but cooked, they're also good. There's, there's a lot you can gain from having these. I think we slept right through our campfire celebration, which is unfortunate, but what can you do? They were exhausted. So I can't believe I didn't think to put lightning rods in here, so we'll definitely do that secondary. Animal taming, I guess we gotta research this first. So let's do that. And tailoring, and then construction bases. It's gonna be a long time before we leave this, this rudimentary camp with all these other things queued up before we get to construction basics. Our breakthroughs, I guess I should have mentioned these sooner. Our breakthrough technologies for the seed are ore prospecting, sleep training, chitlin synthetics, graphene solar cells, and improved laser pistols. I am genuinely hoping we'll also be able to acquire more characters. I always love more characters. But it would be really great to have more people to work with and also just to make this settlement feel fuller and I guess just more populated, more prosperous, all the things. We might need to number our activities at this point. And I think maybe that will be the best way to organize this, at least for now. We do have weaponsmithing, which is fantastic. Let's go into our production options and pull up our workbench and get a workbench in here. Let's rotate this around and build ourselves a workbench. And research lightning rods, wonderful, because I really don't want our folks being electrocuted. It's just not great. And thankfully we did find some, or we did scavenge some metals. I'm like so quick to interrupt whatever Quinn is doing so that we can do, we can build this lightning rod. I remember now what I wanted the scrap metal for. We need to add some traps to our, like our little aisle here that's meant for our baddies to come through. So I would like to set some traps here. It's a really small lane, this is also a very temporary camp, so hopefully that's that's gonna be sufficient. I did hear from a commenter in a previous video, and I'll put that comment on screen, that the reason why I was getting attacked along the outer edges and they weren't funneling through here is because I put a gate right here so that the characters could get in and out through this lane. And um, I guess that created an issue, but hopefully at this time I will get it right and they will actually use the trap laden lane. <laughs> And I guess I should manage everybody's schedules next. So let's do that. All right, so I think that this might be good for now. Let's try it out and see what happens. New resource liquid fuel, heck yes. So we can get ourselves a balloon in the air, hopefully soon. All right, so we've almost got ourselves completely fenced in, which is great. I feel better already, especially considering they don't have any weapons yet. So let's craft some weapons. We'll do four, since we have four people. And we'll ask, well actually Vivian should, if I set up my priorities correctly, start crafting on her own. And let's not forget that gorgeous view we have out this way. We will get there, folks. We will start building and farming out this way and make ourselves just a gorgeous, more permanent settlement out in this area here. We're just a few steps away, really. Let's see if we can get her. Not enough resources. What do we need to craft these spears then? Wood and scrap metal, and we are lacking in scrap metal. We've researched animal taming. Okay, let's see what this does. With the proper treat, most animals could be tamed. 
Tamed animals would require food, medicine, maybe even a place to sleep. Some can have babies, others would be ideal for camp protection. And we will be happy to have them all. Heck yes, we will. Oh, I'm so excited. So from the very first time I played this game, one of the things I really wanted to do was fence in and sort of herd the buffalo looking creatures in the Sobrius region. And I did at one point fence them in and they were happy and content to stay in the fence. But the problem is when I built the fence there, everything else started attacking it to get in. So it was like a pointless effort really. <laughs> and I was only pretending to be herding them because there wasn't actually a function for me to domesticate them. I was just creating the illusion. But now, now we actually can't, just so cool. <laughs> we do have a less than a day's supply of food though. So let's slow things down a second. And we need to look at our raw foods. They are allowed to eat the sweet syrups, which is great. But honestly, we don't even have any right now. And we, have, we don't even have a weapon yet to hunt. Ooh, we're gonna need to harvest some more. So let's go up here and do some more harvesting. We need to keep our people fed, even if it is like pure sugar energy. Ranching. We have, oh, this is so cute. We can build an animal shed. We can build a oh, dedicated sleeping spot for small to medium animals, large sleeping spot, the troughs, the drying rack. Uh, we, yeah, we need one of these anyway. So let's go ahead and put one in here. In production, we have a tailoring bench now, wonderful. So we will build ourselves one of these. It appears that we might have a little bit of trouble placing some of these things because we have so much uneven terrain here. We might have to move the fireplace over to make this a little bit more functional. And I may even want to move this over. Tina's well rested. I'm gonna ask her to do some moving. As soon as we research the shroom torches, I think I'm gonna put one here to light up the space where they do all their research. And having the campfire on this end is actually great for the indoor spaces. So now that there's always a light here, this fella is gonna be so warm sleeping this close to the fireplace. I almost feel bad, like maybe I should back this up a square. It just feels wrong, like he's gonna get burnt. Okay, so these guys are working late, which wasn't my intent initially. I did schedule them to have proper work hours, but I think for the sake of getting everybody armed, it's worth having her work a little late into the night or something. And maybe this? Wait a second. Why did nobody mention this? Flare shielding? Is this just the first time I've seen it and it's always been here? This looks new to me. This looks like a new research. It says, the star of this planet is already emitting immense electromagnetic radiation. Any solar flare would render all our scavenged or improvised CPUs inoperable. We could design an EMP shield hardware and build it in our devices. Such shielding would require a lot of energy though. Uh, but we had to research electric grids and have a survivor with Intel Active 3, which were solid there. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. Before Hugo runs off into the abyss to do whatever he's doing, let's, let's arm our guy and then he can go harvest because obviously our folks are starving and he needs to, to harvest. I need to let him harvest. Yes, Grain Cob, my friend, you are amazing. Thank you so much. And there's like a lot of them. Let's harvest these first. So good. And then we're gonna farm, or we're gonna actually grow rain cup because it's that it's that valuable that we're gonna start growing it like immediately. Low food supply, less than a day, but we will we will recover from this. We've got 50 grain now, which means I need to queue up the grain forage recipe. Katina, actually, if you could. I'm gonna interrupt her studies for a moment so she can cook. This is actually one of the beautiful things about both Katina and Vivian having an inclination for the cooking, farming, harvesting, all that, even if it's minor, because then we can have either one of those characters double down on cooking if Hugo is just way too busy with the farming and the harvesting and the livestock rearing and all those things. We've discovered the Dromeda. From my first observation, a peaceful herbivore which will most likely avoid conflicts and run away from a threat. Dromeda statue, 40 stones. Hmm. I think we need to add handling to Quinn's queue as well. Oh, look at that. He put the, the hide on the tanning rack. That's great. We needed that. Find other things that would be valuable. A statue, oh, we can actually build a statue. That's what that meant. Well, I, yeah, let's try it. Why not? 
That seems really fun. We can like line our gates with it or something. How many weapons do we have? Into is capable of fighting. Combat zero. Combat indifferent. Combat zero. Just Hugo. At least he's armed. And we are under attack. Let's test this out, shall we? Does this new... Um, let's have him move this tailoring bench and we will draft Vivian as well. What are these folks doing out here? And Quinn, let's draft you too. Let's rotate this. So our first fight... They seem kind of capable. They are coming in here through the trap. There we go, so he'll t he does want to attack that, which is great. Well, if that's the case, let's pull Vivian back. I'm going to keep Hugo here because he's got the long stick and he'll be able to keep most people safe as a first line of defense. Katina, I want to keep the most safe because she's our healer. <sighs> All right, so for a situation where we only had uh, one pike and a lane full of traps, I actually don't feel like that went very bad. I think that went pretty good. <laughs> I think we're okay. But let's pause and take a look at how healing's going. So Katina is awaiting treatment, so we're going to need her to first heal herself and then she can heal these fellas. Looks like Quinn is the only one who walked out of that all right, so let's have him start repairing. I'm actually really pleased with how this turned out. That worked! So I guess the advice to like put, not put a door here did in fact funnel them as intended. And Vivian reached combat one, that's great, so I guess she's our next most capable fighter. And we're now going to experience a dust storm. That's quite a sound. Farming, right, we have green cob now. 80, 80, 80, 100 out here. That works. It's 100% and it's a nice square patch. Would be our green field right there. Whoa. A new menu. What? I don't even know how I got here. Manage. Tamed animals. There's a tamed animals menu. And I'm just now seeing it. Yay! That's so exciting. These are the bison lake features I was talking about earlier from the Sobrius region that I really, really, really wanted to uh, tame. So that's exciting. Hopefully on our other playthrough, when I go back to updating that, these new changes will be implemented without having to restart that run. We have discovered the glitter cap, folks. That's important. So let's go harvest those. And leisure, what have we gained? The shroom torch. But we do have new apparel. And I'm gonna give Katina the hat first. Because I'm really trying to increase <laughs> her weather durability. Oh no, Katina is having a meltdown. All right, Shroom Torch. This is a thing now, we can do this. We're gonna put it right here. And there is our gorgeous Shroom Lamp that is gonna illuminate the space for them to work in, which is phenomenal. And then the fire pit over here, which is great for cooking, but also illuminates the interior spaces as well. I would say they are no longer in the dark. It looks like manure is a thing now that we have in game. I'm sure there's gonna be some kind of like mucking the stables or something to do. Let's take a look up high here at our options for constructing our our home. Let's do some wooden stairs and then we'll build the actual building out of wood as well. And we'll start there. So we are gonna have to mark some more trees for cutting for sure. Honestly for being very hard mode I'm surprised that it hasn't been harder so far. I mean, knock on wood. But um, yeah, I mean, this has gone relatively smoothly, I think. 
Let's go ahead and start thinking about some ranching uh, builds because I feel like uh, it would be really nice to be able to um, start taming some animals. So let's put a sleeping spot for large animals here because I don't really know yet what we're going to tame so I'm just going to I don't know where dogs come from. Like I thought maybe they would land with you on the, you know, crash landing shuttle, but ours didn't. So I'm really hoping that maybe we'll just find them then run running around in the wild. I'm not sure. So we have our troughs, our feeders. Um, put two in there like that. We'll see if maybe we can manifest some um, creatures. We could herd something, I don't know. We have currently two meat soup, two veggie soup, so hopefully we're just gonna keep cooking so that everybody has something to eat whenever they do get hungry. And Hugo is out here getting these for us. I would like to also start farming these as well. But I do wonder if we could benefit from planting some of these. Severe heat wave. Oh dear, it's 103 degrees, oh no. I would definitely have heat stroke, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I do feel like we need somebody back on scavenging because we're not getting the medals we need for weapons. And then I'm gonna see if Vivian will actually do the honors. This is coming along nicely. I'm really excited for this. Maybe soon we can actually try um, domesticating some of the wildlife. Severe heat wave, insufficient materials, destroyed structures, damaged structures, two injuries. As soon as Katina is done healing herself, I'm sure she'll get busy with the others. Hugo did reach combat four though. So we're no closer to the animal handling that I wanted us to be closer to. I think what we need to do is try unknown team. What about, I guess we have to research the other. I don't know how we're supposed to find out. Oh, we should be scavenging this too. How do we learn what a Dermita's food is? Oh no. Well, he's doing a food binge. I guess he's not destroying anything. I think we're gonna cancel constructing these because I am gonna find a much better place for them. So like for instance, I think a great place to put one of these might be like here on either side of the stable. That might be nice. But again, I'm gonna mark these as uh, do not construct yet because we definitely have uh, bigger priorities than that to get around to. The material we're gonna have the most of at our disposal is gonna be the skin bark. So for the sake of flooring, even though it may not be the most attractive flooring, it is definitely something that we have an abundance of. If nothing else, it'll be colorful. And toxic ash, that's no good. Okay, there's not a whole lot I can do at this point with toxic ash besides try and put these guys to sleep. Um, when they start to get sick. And most of them are well rested right now, so putting them to sleep right now is not really gonna help. I just gotta keep an eye on them. It is getting later in the day. Maybe they'll go to sleep on their own. I do think that looks really cool. I'm really happy with this. Okay, good. So Quinn is heading to sleep. Hugo is also heading to sleep because toxic ash is harming him. Katina is also off to sleep and also gonna get some rest and recovery, some R&R. &R. Vivian should be right behind them. Let's draft and undraft her, and there we go. Yes, yeah, she's off to sleep. She's so off to sleep right now during toxic ash is where we want them to be. It is chilly. It is 28 degrees outside. I am sorry. Hugo, over here where Katina is, it's 42 because she's closest to the fire. And Hugo is up for some reason. I guess he was just that cold. He had to go stand by the fire. I didn't realize they would do that. That's interesting. Honestly, I'm so excited to get them indoors, to get like a proper table, cook stove, and of course, figure out how exactly we are going to learn the food's uh, preference for the dromeda so that we can domesticate them. Everybody is feeling a little bit sicker though, which is not great. I am trying to keep them inside if I can just to try and wait out the dust storm a little bit longer. It is still toxic ash out, it is still daylight. I mean, it's, I mean, really, look at that. That's terrible. Oh, and our first fella has, has come undrafted. I guess I just can't hold them much longer than that. They're all in moderate pain, shortness of breath, not feeling too hot. Let's see if we can get Vivian to clear out the rest of this field so that we can plant. 
Another day down, another day colder. Just kidding. We haven't really had the discussion yet about naming this place. Right off the bat, I already have sort of an idea for this place, even in its infancy, even though very little of it is constructed so far. I am thinking, what about Dromeda, or Dromeda, if that's how it's said, Dromeda Bay. I mean, it, it makes sense. We have so many of these here. Yeah, we're basically in a canyon. And then we've got this little cove here. But I do like the idea of naming it after this animal, since it seems to be the most prominent uh, animal in this area. I mean, we have some here and here and over here. And aside from these big bloated bugs, I haven't seen much else. There were some of those little lizards at the very beginning, but I've already, they've already cleared out. And I haven't seen one for a very long time. We certainly have plenty of dromedas. So I think it would be really great to use that, especially with a playthrough that is focusing on this taming update. I think dromeda Bay or Dramata Cove or Dramata Canyon would be ideal. Any of those three. So let me know down in the comments which of those three names you like best. Cove, Bay, or Canyon. How do we... Oh, no, 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 no. My guy. Observe this. We have some of these nearby. That's so cool. I haven't seen one in a couple days. So we now have, I guess, enough skill to craft some short bows, so let's get on that. Oh no, not enough resources. What resources do we need? Some fabrics and some sticks. We don't have fabrics, really? I guess not, wow, okay. Let's harvest these then. We have discovered the long tail reptile called Tecatli. Unlocks taming of this and this statue for them. The, the new statue, the new creature. I think we could use both. Katina, I know this is your leisure time, but you're so close to finishing this research. Please just finish it. She stopped at 99%. Who does that? So now we can craft this in the workbench and we shall. Let's go back and bump this up and then we will ask Vivian to come do that before that goes bad because it is going bad very quickly. I can try queuing up the next best thing. All right, new weapon, heck yeah, let's equip that. Also, can he tame this? Not enough food. Uh, we're gonna wanna save some of this meat now for trying to domesticate some things. I don't know, let's see what happens. Uh, if he hunts this and then we butcher it, will we then have enough food? Sorry, you gentle beast, but I'm trying to test out something. I want us to be able and domesticate the taka taka thing. It's always something, now we have enough meat, but then these are hostile. Bring her back in to do some cooking instead while we wait for those hostiles to attack. I think now might be a great time to save. I haven't saved this game once. And now we are under animal attack. Couldn't have saved a moment sooner. <laughs> They're just swarming us which is kind of crazy, because they're everywhere. Shouldn't Hugo be shooting, right? Like, let's move you back here since you have the bow and move you here since you have a, you know, the pokey thing. There we go, now he's using the bow. I'll come over here because this seems to be a bigger problem right now. <sighs> a little much there, folks. There's nothing left to flee. There is the opportunity to make a lot more armor, though, now that these are here. Which I suppose means we'll be able to make, yeah, more synthetic insect material right as soon as um, butcher these, I suppose. And Katina is, of course, being a rock star and doing some healing. We have a new production, folks. We have metal refinement. And not gonna lie, our space is getting pretty stacked over here. 
We're not, we're kind of running out of room. We don't have a lot left, but we'll work with what we got while we're still <laughs> depending on this. Um, Hugo is harvesting. Phenomenal, especially since the stuff will go bad before you know it. We do need a lot, lot, lot more storage space. I think it's time to start looking at storing some things inside. So let's figure out how we want to divvy up this house. Um, we're definitely gonna need rooms. We're definitely gonna need a kitchen of sorts. And let's start with a stick wall right across here. That's a great place to start. And if we go, these are four deep. And again, the walls, stick wall. Um, two, three, two. Um, I did not mean to go that far, whoops. Um, and then one more time, there we go. Um, so we have rooms now, that's great. Let's add some doors and we'll give them proper doors this time. I won't force them all to um, have open arches since we are using stick walls, so there should be a lot of uh, temperature transfer from space to space. These aren't great for like insulation anyway. And then we can start looking at beds, four beds. And we just gained a fermentation barrel, that's great. I don't have a clue where I'm gonna stick it, but what if we deconstruct this and then we will replace that with this. Back to this house thing. I really think we need some storage inside, but we also need, I wanted a cook stove for sure. Uh, where do I wanna put it though? I think center of the room here is nice. And then we'll do a stockpile here, but the only thing we're gonna put in it is sticks. And that's because we're gonna want fuel in here. So we'll put some sticks there. Table at long last, yes. Since the room's made out of wood, let's do a stone table. Put this here. Four chairs. Put this here. Put some shelving. Really just here would be great. Let's start with that and see where that gets us. Also, maybe some windows would be good. We'll do... Like that, those will be our windows. We have researched pickling, and I believe I was working on finding a spot to put. We'll move this here, and I do want to move that forward a space. It would just be so much easier for us to fight if we could actually stand in front of this wall here. So I need to bring in the desk. And eventually all of those workbenches will be inside the house anyway. <sighs> Research to antibiotic production. Right, I keep going back to this and I keep forgetting that I wanted a um, fermentation barrel. So let's, let's get that for ourselves, shall we? I wonder if Vivian could put food in the trough. Would it bring animals? Would we be able to lure them in, maybe? All right, cool. That was fun. <laughs> Very exciting. And we have our other statue here, which is pretty nice. Vivian is felling these trees for us, which is good. So now we can get Quinn to construct these fermentation barrels and start pickling some of these vegetables so they don't go to waste. Oh look, and he's gonna construct this while he's at it. That's great. I forgot that was even waiting. So we'll make this one our antibody barrel and we'll make this one our pickling barrel. We have such a surplus of hay out here from just clearing away this patch for farming. Like we're over a thousand, we're at 1.3 thousand bundle of hay. I feel like I could be using it for bricks, so we're gonna study brick making. And soon I'm hoping we'll be able to move everything inside. We're gonna need to get back to scrapping though. We need more scrap metal for sure. So let's try some of that. And we've researched bricks, so we can start making brick too, which would be great. And we have a silicone, a new resource, that's great too. Working on the Great Migration, starting to take everything indoors. No research in queue. Well, we definitely have to fix this. We wanted electronic grids for sure. Oh, uh, long distance travel, let's switch those. The sooner we get long distance travel, the higher our chance of finding a seventh, sorry, fifth person. I do want to unlock concrete so we can do more of like a concrete um, defense. Flamethrowers and then this perhaps. Let's start, let's, let's do that for now. Aiming food is something, oh, that's why we haven't discovered this yet. Okay, so I guess we're gonna have to go research, find and research that material. 
I think, yep, here it is. Here is exactly what we're looking for. And since they're gonna wanna come up and over, I'm gonna pick the one that's nearest. All right, I'm gonna have to do the unthinkable here. I am going to have to allow them to eat the glitter caps raw for right now, unfortunately. I'm gonna refuel this. And uh, Hugo, draft and undraft, so he can go eat. What's she doing? Draft and undraft, no, let her go eat too. That's good. Even though we're like probably seconds away from being attacked. Okay, pause. This person looks very badly injured, and I want to get her as far away from this as possible right now. Oh. I'm gonna need her to heal herself. She's having a meltdown. She'll have to heal herself later, I guess. We have one last animal attack happening here. You go, my friend. Could you do us a favor and kill this thing? All right, we'll undraft Vivian and Hugo while they go wait to be treated by the person who is gonna have to finish crying first. Now it's starting to feel like very hard mode. <laughs> now it does. Is he healing somebody? Is Hugo trying to heal someone right now? I guess he's got a little healing experience. I do love that the brick in the Desertum region is red, like the stone is red where it was um, like white stone in the Sobrius region. Here we have red stone, which is really cool. I think something else we could really stand to put in here is going to be a way to heat the interior space. It seemed to really be hurting for climate control. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. We're really hurting for climate control. So adding this here will hopefully help with that. Fallen rescue pod. An object or something rescue pod fell in distance both their survivors. Okay, pause. We have completed long distance travel. Yes, just on time. It's not really where I want it long term, but that's where I'm gonna put it for right now. We need to construct this like immediately. And I'm gonna have her construct it because she is honestly the one in the best uh, physical health condition right now. So we're gonna have her do that. Missing resources, what resources are missing? We need some metal alloy, so Katina. You're going to smelt scrap metal until we have it this. 638 skin parks, 15 hides, but yet we still can't construct it. Katina, we need you. This plant is so important. 90% researched, okay. So we've got to get that balloon together, folks. That needs to be such a high priority. We have the discovery of the cloth blossom, a fitting name, Harps' Cloth. Hopefully we haven't wasted any time, or too much time, I suppose, putting this together. On the plus side, I do think Quinn has like a, um, an explorer trait. Yeah, he loves to go on expeditions and he's faster. He goes faster, so we're probably gonna send him first. Crash rescue pod, no. Oh man, it gives you so little time. So little time to get there. Wake up, I want you to go on this mission. Okay, on expedition, finally. <laughs> Whew. Now, fingers crossed, he comes back with a survivor from the crash. Expedition complete, he found a survivor. Yes, we did it, woo! And it's Ken, oh, I'm so happy with that because Ken is our scrap metal guy and he's unarmed, but that's okay. Oh my goodness, okay, manage activities. We are gonna take or scrap scavenging off of everybody's list except for Ken. That's Ken's new number one. He's also a decent healer. Yeah, so he can be like literally just a three everywhere else is fine. I just want him scavenging when he gets back. We got our fifth survivor. He's also good at combat, so he's just a great addition to our team.
And a distant light. Hugo is starving again. No, Hugo, why? Hugo, eat. A small flickering light can be seen in the distance, breaking the monotony of darkness. It could be a campfire, and maybe there's a survivor. That is interesting. What if he got a sixth, like, the same day? He rested enough to do this? Quinn, refuel. Let's see. Okay, so that's done. Let's do mixing, flamethrowers, uh, electronic crafting, and this, perhaps. Oh, and this. Okay, Katina is researching, which is great. We really, really, really want... Why is it so cold? It's literally a freezer in here. Refuel. That seems vastly more important. It is so cold inside this house. Okay, so it is 59. Good, good, good. Got rid of the frost. That's important. So glad we built that. Okay, so we have fuel mixing. Let's go over here. But of course, I'm also going to need more vegetable oil now. Oh, Ken found some. Good. Let's refuel this balloon and get off the ground. Expedition. Explore. Quinn. Send. Close. And save. Pause. Because we definitely messed that up. Cancel this. Because we went this one. Send him here. Okay. Found a small campfire with embers glowing and faintly in the ash. Someone was here not long ago. Shout, maybe they will hear you. He has a little combat skill. But what about the campfire though? What? Okay. This is a very interesting proposition. I butchered it as much. The insect me, scrap metal and CPU cores. I feel like there's still an opportunity though to walk away with a seventh person. So we're gonna reload this again. Just moving our way backwards through the hours. And the reason we're doing this is because I have a comment where somebody had recommended that perhaps the different outcomes are per hour. Like they shuffle per hour, that's how they randomize. Which so far is turning out to be the case. Let's try it. I want to tame some Dramita and I want to get a seventh person. Sorry, a sixth person. We are going to ask our dear friend Vivian to come up here and harvest these cactus barrels. And then Hugo is harvesting grain until he falls asleep, which is fine. Hour by hour. It's kind of painful to do this hour by hour. And we got a survivor. Oh my gosh, we did it. Okay, so it's the, okay. Yes, yes, it was worth it. It was all worth it. Okay, we got a survivor and we have the resources we need now to tame the Dramina, so let's try both. Okay, so we have Toxic Ash. We just got our new character and the character we received is Talus Wibel. Um, I did have him once before on a very short playthrough that when I did have him on the board, he was, like it says, very hardworking and a great addition to the team. I do think though, because of this toxic ash, even though I am trying to get Hugo to do some taming, I'm gonna bring him indoors to sleep first. I just wanna make sure that everybody survives the toxic ash. Um, here's his spot. I'm gonna bring him in to sleep. I'm gonna bring Katina in to sleep. Quinn is on an expedition. She is transporting these. I think I'm gonna let her finish that before we also ask her to go to sleep. He's still transporting, I forgot about this guy. And our new friends are back, which is great. That'll be his first task as a new member of our society to build his own bed. Quinn also came back on this trip. He needs to eat is what he needs to do. So let's see if we can get him to do that. What I kind of wanna do is have her refuel this. And then I also sort of want to build a little extra fortification around here. 
which we may or may not have the means to build. But we've had an issue with the last couple of bug fights of the bugs actually like breaking through and I know that the raids are only gonna get tougher. Hugo is still sleeping, bless him. And poor Vivian is still carrying these uh, vegetables down from the very, 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 very high cliff that she had climbed to get them from. She is just doing the most and we appreciate her, even though her like movement speed has reduced to like 55%, which is just abysmal and terrible. And actually, she's like, we need to like have her hand off, make this like more of a relay for her. Katina can help with the rest and we will bring Vivian in. Ken is healing. He's probably just had a little too much toxic ash. And we are um, going to be attacked soon. Like, very, very soon. Where are these guys? They're, like, seriously so close to... And where are they coming from? Right over there. I think it might be time to bring, bring Quinn inside. Okay, so here comes trouble. And this is what I was talking about before and why I wanted the second line of defense because this is not great. We are not keeping them back long enough. Just come inside. I'm gonna want everybody sort of huddling together, I think might be my best strategy. So grab all of my survivors and have them all fall back to the same spot and hopefully the huddle will help keep them safe and help them keep each other safe. Let's move them all a little bit closer. There's somebody got left behind over here. came down as expected, but I will say I'm impressed with the huddle uh, strategy and how well that worked. So I am going to have to undraft Katina, have her heal herself first. Ken is a pretty proficient healer, so maybe, just maybe, we'll have him heal himself first as well, and he might be able to help out with everybody else. Hugo has fainted. Why are there 63 more? Quinn doesn't even have time to be eating right now. I need him repairing this fence pronto. We don't even have the stones to do it. I don't know how we're gonna survive this. Not exactly the pet I had in mind when I was thinking about um, domesticating an animal. Taming a Dramita? Really, that's what he's doing right now? I mean, if he thinks now's a good time, I guess we can let him try. In a toxic ash storm, in the midst of 63 hungry past, Hugo will still put it all aside to tame some wild beast in just the most awkwardly yet cinematic scene possible. Let's see what you got, man. Let's see how he does it. Taming successful, we did it. We tamed a Dramita. You can now order survivors to lead animals to select locations, depending on the animal. Uh, there are also options to allow the survivor to train and pet. Interesting. Hugo is leading his tamed beast. Did you look at that? In a very awkward two-step formation. But at least they're staying to this side of trouble because trouble is still waiting out there for us. Taming succeeded, so excited about that. Our new pet is eating from the trough, yay. 
despite the 63 threatening hungry pests that are just hovering around us, we have tamed the Dramita, the first of hopefully many. And we have, I wonder if we can tame these because they just keep coming back to the trough. This is our first episode and we have our first Dramita. So I am extremely happy. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. Oh, and let me know, of course, what you think of the name down in the comments below. If you liked the video, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, do subscribe. We're gonna play more Stranded Alien Dawn on this channel every week. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.